Part one of chapter one of Stories of Animal Sagacity. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. Stories of Animal Sagacity by W. H. G. Kingston. Chapter one Cats. I have undertaken, my young friends, to give you a number of anecdotes, which will, I think, prove that animals possess not only instinct, which guides them in obtaining food and enables them to enjoy their existence according to their several natures, but also that many of them are capable of exercising a kind of reason which comes into play under circumstances to which they are not naturally exposed those animals more peculiarly fitted to be the companions of man and to assist him in his occupations appear to possess generally a larger amount of this power at all events we have better opportunities of noticing it although probably it exists also in a certain degree among wild animals i will commence with some anecdotes of the sagacity shown by animals with which you are all well acquainted cats and dogs and if you have been accustomed to watch the proceedings of your dumb companions you will be able to say why that is just like what tabby once did or our ponto acted nearly as cleverly as that the other day cat and the knocker when you see pussy seated by the fireside blinking her eyes and looking very wise you may often ask i wonder what she can be thinking about just then probably she is thinking about nothing at all but if you were to turn her out of doors into the cold and shut the door in her face she would instantly begin to think how can i best get in again and she would run around and around the house trying to find a door or a window open by which she might re-enter it i once heard of a cat which exerted a considerable amount of reason under these very circumstances. I am not quite certain of this pussy's name, but it may possibly have been Deborah. The house where Deborah was born and bred is situated in the country, and there is a door with a small porch opening on a flower garden. Very often, when this door was shut, Deborah, or Little Deb, as she may have been called, was left outside. And, on such occasions, she used to mew as loudly as she could to beg for admittance. Occasionally she was not heard, but instead of running away and trying to find some other home, she used, wise little creature that she was, patiently to ensconce herself in a corner of the window sill and wait till some person came to the house, who, on knocking at the door, found immediate attention. Many a day, no doubt, little Deb sat there on the window sill and watched this proceeding, gazing at the knocker and wondering what it had to do with getting the door open. A month passed away, and little Deb grew from a kitten into a full-sized cat. Many a weary hour was passed in her corner. At length, Deb arrived at the conclusion that if she could manage to make the knocker sound a rap-a-tap-tap on the door, the noise would summon the servant, and she would gain admittance as well as the guests who came to the house. One day, Deb had been shut out, when Mary, the maid servant, who was sitting industriously stitching away, heard a rap-a-tap at the front door, announcing the arrival, as she supposed, of a visitor. Putting down her work, she hurried to the door and lifted the latch, but no one was there except Deb, who at that moment leaped off the window sill and entered the house. Mary looked along the road, up and down on either side, thinking that some person must have knocked and gone away, but no one was in sight. The following day the same thing happened, but it occurred several times before anyone suspected that Deb could possibly have lifted the knocker. At length Mary told her mistress what she suspected, and one of the family hid in the shrubbery to watch Deb's proceedings. Deb was allowed to run out in the garden, and the door was closed. 
After a time, the little creature was seen to climb up on the window sill and then to rear herself on her hind feet in an oblique position at the full stretch of her body, when, steadying herself with one front paw, with the other she raised the knocker, and Mary, who was on the watch, instantly ran to the door and let her in. Miss Deb's knock now became as well known to the servant as that of any other member of the family, and, no doubt, to her great satisfaction, it usually met with prompt attention. Could the celebrated cat of the renowned Marquis of Carabas have done more or better? Not only must Deb have exercised reason and reflection, as well as imitation, but a considerable amount of perseverance, for, probably, she made many vain attempts before she was rewarded with success. Some Scotch ladies told me of a cat they had had when they were young, brought by their grandfather from Archangel, which, under the same circumstances, used to reach up to the latch of the front door of a house in the country, and to rattle away on it till admitted. I have seen a cat, which the same ladies now possess, make a similar attempt. Does it not occur to you that you may take a useful lesson from little pussy, and when you have an object to gain, a task to perform, think over the matter, and exert yourself to the utmost till you have accomplished it? End of The Cat and the Knocker The Cat and the Rabbit Trap An instance of the sagacity of a cat came under my own notice. I was living, a few years ago, in a country place in Dossetshire, when one day a small tortoise-shell cat met my children on the road and followed them home. They, of course, petted and stroked her, and showed their wish to make her their friend. She was one of the smallest, and yet the most active of full-grown cats I ever saw. From the first, she gave evidence of being a wild and predatory disposition, and made sad havoc among the rabbits, squirrels, and birds. I have several times seen her carry along a rabbit half as big as herself. Many would exclaim that for so nefarious a deed she ought to have been shot, but as she had tasted of my salt, taken refuge under my roof, Besides being the pet of my children, I could not bring myself to order her destruction. We had, about the time of her arrival, obtained a dog to act as a watchman over the premises. She and he were at first on fair terms, a sort of armed neutrality. In process of time, however, she became the mother of a litter of kittens. With the exception of one, they shared the fate of other kittens. When she discovered the loss of her hopeful family, she wandered about in a melancholy way, evidently searching for them, till, encountering Carlo, it seemed suddenly to strike her that he had been the cause of her loss. With back up, she approached, and flying at him with the greatest fury, attacked him till blood dropped from his nose, when, though ten times her size, he fairly turned tail and fled. Pussy and Carlo, after this, became friends. At least, they never interfered with each other. Pussy, however to her cost, still continued her hunting expeditions. The rabbits had committed great depredations in the garden, and the gardener had procured two rabbit traps. One had been set at a considerable distance from the house, and fixed securely in the ground. One morning, the nurse heard a plaintive mewing at the window of the day nursery on the ground floor. She opened it, and in crawled poor Pussy, dragging the heavy iron rabbit trap, in the teeth of which her forefoot was caught. I was called in, and assisted to release her. Her paw swelled, and for some time she could not move out of the basket in which she was placed before the fire. Though suffering intense pain, she must have perceived that the only way to release herself was to dig up the trap and then drag it up many steep paths to the room where her kindest friends, nurse and the children, were to be found. Carlo had been caught before in the same trap, and he bit at it and everything around and severely injured the gardener who went to release him. Thus, Pussy, under precisely the same circumstances, showed by far the greatest amount of sagacity and cool courage. 
She, however, not many weeks after her recovery, came in one day with her foot sadly lacerated, having again been caught in a trap so although she could reason she did not appear to have learned wisdom from experience this last misfortune however taught her prudence as she was never again caught in a trap you will agree with me that pussy was wise in going to her best friends for help when in distress and foolish having once suffered again to run into the same danger you my young reader will often be entrapped if you lack strength to resist temptation your kind friends at home will i am sure help you as far as they have the power but that they may do so you must on all occasions trust them end of the cat and the rabbit trap affection exhibited by a cat I was one day calling in Dorsetshire on a clever, kind old lady who showed me a beautiful tabby cat coiled up before the fire. Seventeen years ago, said she, that cat's mother had a litter. They were all ordered to be drowned with the exception of one. The servant brought me one. It was a tortoise shell. No, I said, that will always be looking dirty. I will choose another. So I put my hand into the basket and drew forth this tabby. The tabby has loved me ever since. When she came to have a family, she disappeared, but the rain did not, for it came pouring down through the ceiling, and it was discovered that Dame Tabby had made a line-in hospital for herself in the thatched roof of the house. The damage she did cost several pounds, so we asked a friend who had a good cook, fond of cats, to take care of tabby the next time she gave signs of having a family as we knew she'd be well fed we sent her in a basket completely covered up and she was shut into a room where she soon exhibited a progeny of young mewlins more than the usual number were allowed to survive and it was thought that she would remain quietly where she was not so on the first opportunity she made her escape and down she came all the length of the village and early in the morning i heard her mewing at my bedroom door to be let in when i had stroked her back and spoken kindly to her off she went to look after her nurslings from that day every morning she came regularly to see me and would not go away till she had been spoken to and caressed having satisfied herself that i was alive and well back she would go she never failed to pay me that one visit in the morning and never came twice in the day till she had weaned her kittens and that very day she came back and nothing would induce her to go away again i had not the heart to force her back from that day to this she has always slept at the door of my room surely you will not be less grateful to those who brought you up than was my old friend's cat to her acts not mere words show the sincerity of our feelings consider how you are acting towards them each hour and day of your life are you doing your best to act well whether at home at school or at play end of affection exhibited by a cat the cat and her young mistresses my friend mrs f gave me a very touching anecdote a lady she knew residing in essex once had two young daughters they had a pet cat which they had reared from a kitten and which was their constant companion the sisters however were both seized with scarlet fever and died the cat seemed perfectly to understand what had taken place and refusing to leave the room seated herself on the bed where they lay in most evident sorrow when the bodies of the young girls were placed in their small coffins she continued to move backwards and forwards from one to the other uttering low and melancholy sounds nothing could induce her all the time to take food and soon after the interment of her fond playmates she lay down and passed away from life this account given by the mother of the children makes me quite ready to believe in the truth of similar anecdotes tender affection is like a beautiful flower 
it needs cultivation as cold winds and pelting showers injure the fair blossoms so passionate temper sullen behavior or misconduct will destroy the love which should exist between brothers and sisters and those whose lot is cast together cherish affectionate feelings in your heart be kind and gentle to all around and your friends will love you more than even the cat i have told you about loved her mistresses end of the cat and her young mistresses the cat which died of grief a lady in france possessed a cat which exhibited great affection for her she accompanied her everywhere and when she sat down always lay at her feet from no other hands than those of her mistress would she take food nor would she allow any one else to fondle her the lady kept a number of tame birds but the cat though she would willingly have caught and eaten strange birds never injured one of them at last the lady fell ill when nothing could induce the cat to leave her chamber and on her death the attendants had to carry away the poor animal by force the next morning however she was found in the room of death creeping slowly about and mewing piteously after the funeral the faithful cat made her escape from the house and was at length discovered stretched out lifeless above the grave of her mistress having evidently died of a broken heart the instances i have given and i might give many more prove the strong affection of which cats are capable and show that they are well deserving of kind treatment when we see them catch birds and mice we must remember that it is their nature to do so as in their wild state they have no other means of obtaining food end of the cat which died of grief the cat and the canary animals of a very different character often form curious friendships what do you think of the cat which of her own accord became the protector of a pet canary instead of eating it up the cat and the bird belonged to the mother-in-law of mrs lee who has given us many delightful anecdotes of animals the canary was allowed to fly about the room when the cat was shut out but one day their mistress lifting her head from her work saw that the cat had by some means got in and to her amazement there was the canary perched fearlessly on the back of pussy who seemed highly pleased with the confidence placed in her by the silent language with which animals communicate their ideas to each other she had been able to make the canary understand that she would not hurt it after this the two were allowed to be constantly together to their mutual satisfaction one morning however as they were in the bedroom of their mistress what was her dismay to see the trustworthy cat as she had supposed her after uttering a feline growl seize the canary in her mouth and leap with her into the bed there she stood her tail stiffened out her hair bristling and her eyes glaring fiercely the fate of the poor canary appeared sealed but just then the lady caught sight of a strange cat creeping cautiously through the open doorway the intruder was quickly driven away when faithful puss deposited her feathered friend on the bed in no way injured she having thus seized it to save it from the fangs of the stranger confidence begets confidence but be very sure that the person on whom you bestow yours is worthy of it if not you will not be as fortunate as the canary was with its feline friend your truest confidants in most cases are your own parents end of the cat and the canary the cat and the frog i have an instance of a still stranger friendship to mention the servants of a country house and i am sure that they were kind people had enticed a frog from its hole by giving it food as winter drew on froggy every evening made its way to the kitchen hearth before a blazing fire which it found much more comfortable than its own dark abode out in the yard another occupant of the hearth was a favorite old cat 
which, at first, I dare say, looked down on the odd little creature with some contempt, but was too well-bred to disturb an invited guest. At length, however, the two came to a mutual understanding, the kind heart of Pussy warming towards poor chilly little Froggy, whom she now invited to come nestle under her cozy fur. From that time forward, as soon as Froggy came out of its hole, it hopped fearlessly towards the old cat, who constituted herself its protector, and would allow no one to disturb it. Imitate the kind cat, and be kind to the most humble, however odd their looks. Sometimes at school and elsewhere, you might find some friendless little fellow. Prove his protector. Be not less benevolent than a cat. End of The Cat and the Frog The Cat and Her Dead Kitten That cats expect those to whom they are attached to sympathize with them in their sorrow is shown by an affecting story told by Dr. Good, the author of the Book of Nature. He had a cat which used to sit at his elbow hour after hour while he was writing, watching his hand moving over the paper. At length, Pussy had a kitten to take care of, when she became less constant in her attendance on her master. One morning, however, she entered the room, and, leaping on the table, began to rub her furry side against his hand and pen to attract his attention. He, supposing she wished to be let out, opened the door, but instead of running forward, she turned round and looked earnestly at him, as though she had something to communicate. Being very busy, he shut the door upon her and resumed his writing. In less than an hour, the door having been opened again, he felt her rubbing against his feet. When, on looking down, he saw that she had placed close to them the dead body of her kitten, which had accidentally been killed, and which she had brought evidently that her kind master might mourn with her at her loss. She seemed satisfied when she saw him with the dead kitten in his hand, making inquiries as to how it had been killed, and, when it was buried, believing that her master shared her sorrow, she gradually took comfort and resumed her station at his side. Observe how, in her sorrow, Pussy went to her best friend for sympathy. Your best earthly friends are your parents. Do not hesitate to tell them your grief and you will realize that it is their joy and comfort to sympathize with you in all your troubles, little or great, and to try to relieve them. End of the Cat and Her Dead Kitten The Kitten and the Chickens Kittens, especially if deprived of their natural protectors, seem to long for the friendship of other beings, and will often roam about till they find a person in whom they think they may confide. Sometimes they make a curious choice. A kitten born on the roof of an outhouse was by an accident deprived of its mother and brethren. It evaded all attempts to catch it, though food was put within its reach. Just below where it had lived, a brood of chickens were constantly running about, and at length, growing weary of solitude, it thought that it would like to have such lively little playmates. So down it scrambled and timidly crept towards them. Finding that they were not likely to do it harm, it lay down among them. The chickens seemed to know that it was too young to hurt them. It now followed them wherever they moved to pick up their food. In a short time, a perfect understanding was established between the kitten and the fowls, who appeared especially proud of their new friend. The kitten, discovering this, assumed the post of leader and used to conduct them about the grounds, amusing itself at their expense. Sometimes it would catch hold of their feet, as if going to bite them, when they would peck at it in return. At others, it would hide behind a bush, and then, springing out into their midst, purr and rub itself against their sides. One pullet was an especial favorite. It accompanied her every day to her nest under the boards of an outhouse, and would then lie down outside as if to watch over her. When she returned to the other fowls, it would follow, setting up its tail and purring at her. 
when other chickens were born it transferred its interest to them taking each fresh brood under its protection the parent hen appearing in no way alarmed at having so unusual a nurse for her young ones be as sensible as the little kitten don't stand on your dignity or keep upon the roof in a fit of the sulks but jump down and shake such feelings off with a game of good-natured play end of the kitten and the chickens the cat and the pigeon similar affection for one of the feathered race was shown by a cat which was rearing several kittens in another part of the loft a pigeon had built her nest but her eggs and young having been frequently destroyed by rats it seemed to occur to her that she should be in safer quarters near the cat pussy pleased with the confidence placed in her invited the pigeon to remain near her and a strong friendship was established between the two they fed out of the same dish and when pussy was absent the pigeon in return for the protection afforded her against the rats constituted herself the defender of the kittens and on any person approaching nearer than she liked she would fly out and attack them with beak and wings in the hope of driving them away from her young charges frequently too after this when neither the kittens nor her own brood required her care and the cat went out about the garden or fields the pigeon might be seen fluttering close by her for the sake of her society help and protect one another in all right things as did the cat and the pigeon whatever your respective ages or stations in life the big boy or girl may be able to assist and protect the little ones who may render many a service in return end of the cat and the pigeon the cat and the leveret cats exhibit their affectionate nature in a variety of ways if deprived of their kittens they have a yearning for the care of some other young creatures which they will gratify when possible a cat had been cruelly deprived of all her kittens she was seen going about mewing disconsolately for her young ones her owner received about the same time a leveret which he hoped to tame by feeding it with a spoon one morning however the leveret was missing and as it could nowhere be discovered it was supposed to have been carried off and killed by some strange cat or dog a fortnight had elapsed when as the gentleman was seated in his garden in the dusk of the evening he observed his cat with tail erect trotting towards him purring and calling in the way cats do to their kittens behind her came gamboling merrily with a perfect confidence a little leveret the very one it was now seen which had disappeared pussy deprived of her kittens had carried it off and brought it up instead bestowing on it the affection of her maternal heart it is your blessed privilege to have hearts to feel the greatest enjoyment and tender love for others see that you keep that love in constant exercise or like others of our best gifts it may grow dull by disuse or abuse the time may come when, deprived of your parents or brothers and sisters, you will bitterly mourn the sorrow you have caused by your evil temper or neglect. End of the Cat and the Leveret End of Part 1 of Chapter 1